The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Look, 
All these years I've served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughtered a fat calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Jesus Christ. So we have on this entire Sunday, year C, we have what is perhaps the most famous of Jesus' parables, the story of what people come to call the prodigal son. A prodigal is a word that is rarely used, except in connection with this, with this parable. It's just uh, uh, an adjective that means basically someone who was a spendthrift, someone who was a wastrel, and that's exactly what he did. There, it's a parable, meaning it's a story, to illustrate how it is, it's not something that actually happened. And uh, it, it is a story that Jesus creates in order to, to illustrate higher truths, which is what he does with, with parables, something that he insisted upon using as his vehicle, as his instrument, to com communicate divine truths to limited fallen human beings. And we have several mysteries locked up in this story, many, many. And we have, for example, the great mercy of the Father. But I would like to focus a little bit on the Son for a second. You know, the Son is repentant in a way, but his repentance is what the church would call imperfect contrition. He's not, you know, first off, he insults his father cutting and wounding. He treats his father as if his father were already dead and said, give me my share of my inheritance. You know, I'm not going to wait till you die. Give it to me now. As far as I'm concerned, you don't even exist. And the father respects, respects his request and digs up the properties and gives him his money. He goes to some faraway land and blows it up, you know, like women in Sodom and Hebrew. Now, why did he come back? Did he feel, oh my gosh, I really hurt my father's feelings. I miss my dad. You know, I miss my brother. I feel awful. Is that why he went back? No. He went back just because things went bad before him. He just thought, man, I blew it. You know, even my dad's <clears throat> servants live much better than I do. So I'll just go back and hopefully the old man will take me back. And look, I, I'm not worthy to call your son. Just let me live as one of your servants. And that's better than starving to death in wherever it was that he was. So we had an imperfect contrition there. And we have the Father who stands for our Father, for God, who takes him back and doesn't ask him, doesn't say, hey, why are you coming back to me? Did you miss me? You know, are you going to apologize to me? No. He takes him back. Not only does he take him back, but here's a man who's probably elderly, and he goes, and as soon as he sees him far away, he goes running, goes running, and he throws his arms around him. Son, you're back. You're back. And I'm so delighted that you're back. And we hear repeatedly that this son was dead and has come back to life, was lost, and he has been found. Is that the old man waxing poetic? Like, oh, no. Because what Jesus wants to illustrate here is the effects of our choices, the consequences of our choices, of our sin. You know, God loves us, and he wants all of us back, but he respects our choices. 
He gives us free will. And that doesn't mean that that when we choose wrongly, we're going things are we're not going to have bad consequences. It does, because that's exactly what happened to the son. But once, one thing we see here is the enormity of God's mercy, where this young man comes back to him and doesn't even, I mean, he, if he's going to throw himself at the other, the son should have implored his mercy, he should have said, I'm really sorry. He did apologize in a way by, by lowering himself, but the things that he said to him, his father were brutal. When we sin, we do even worse. When we sin, we're not just, you know, breaking the criminal code of the land. A sin is much more than a crime or a misdemeanor or a felony. A sin, especially a mortal sin, creates a rift between us and God. It creates a final separation. And it is very much as if we were to say to God, you know, Father, you know what? Just give me my, my share of your sake. Come on, cough it up. I'm out of here. That's basically what we do when we sin. And yet our Father calls us back. And he accepts us back. This son was dead. Does that seem like an exaggeration? No. And he was dead not because of his sorrow, but he was dead to show to us that when we sin mortally, that is exactly what happens. We die. Our souls die. And if we die physically in that state of mortal sin, we will go to hell. It's a word that you probably haven't heard in a long time. But something, especially those who are watching on television. But that is a word that we need to, to it's, a, it's a truth that Jesus talks about repeatedly. And we need to be aware of. Now Jesus died and suffered and went through all the things he went through so that we, we have the option not to have to spend eternity there. But we still have free will. We can still choose. God loves us. And his love is built on respect. He respects us. He respects our choices. If we spend our lives away from God, would God want to send us to heaven after that? Would we want to? You know, if we didn't want to spend our life on earth with him, why would we want to spend eternity? with him. However, the option life without him is no life at all. It is it is horrendous, horrendous beyond telling. This is a truth that we need to remind ourselves of. Uh, while we are free to choose, our choices have consequences. But it doesn't matter how low we may have sunk, how abominable a sin we may have committed. We may be completely embarrassed, ashamed of what we've done. We might feel a burden of guilt, feeling that God will never forgive me, or, you know, or, or if I confess the sin, Father will even speak to me again. He's going to think I'm a monster. But no, we're all sinners, and we all sin pretty abominably in the eyes of God, enough to warrant the death of our souls. But our God is merciful. Our God is merciful. And he wants, he wants us to make the effort to come back, even if we do it for imperfect reasons. He will run out to meet us halfway. And he will, there will be great rejoicing in heaven over the conversion of one sinner. So today, let us pray for the grace to clean our own houses, but let us pray especially for those who are lost today, that they may be given the grace of conversion, that they may begin to take the steps to do the important and difficult work of returning to God, that they may have the courage 
to step into the confessional and to be reconciled with the Father will be overjoyed to love him back. God bless you.
become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave it thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
and graciously grant you peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a few announcements. Um, tomorrow at 9.30 a.m., the St. Hyacinth Pierogi Makers will be here. We would like to, uh, to join them. Uh, that's tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. in the other park. Uh, Gosh Prishala, the chanting of the Passion, will be taking place, God willing, this afternoon, and every Sunday of Lent at 2 o'clock. Bilingual booklets in Polish and in English are provided. Our annual Lenten series continues this week after Gosh Prishala. This uh, third, this third part of our series will be will be called Reparation and the Holy Hour, and will be given by Father Donald Mazzo. Uh, Stations of the Cross will take place this Friday and every Friday of Lent, immediately following the 5:30 p.m. Mass. The relic of the True Cross will be available for veneration after Stations. Uh, then we will have, uh, if anyone is interested, after that we will have Stations of the Cross. Spanish. If you know any Spanish speakers, you can let them know we will be venerating the relic of the True Cross in Espanol as well. Our annual Easter Bazaar will be this Saturday, April 13, and a sign-up sheet is available on the desk in the vestibule for those who would like to place an order for Polish food, for Kibasi, for Kishka, Babka, etc. Please note that all orders must be picked up at the bazaar. Volunteers are in the vestibule with your raffle tickets for our Easter Bazaar. Please pick them up. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks God. God.